Welcome to Confidence Bites. Start your week the confident way with short, juicy confidence takeaways brought to you by Stuart Elliott from Double C Coaching. Hi there, welcome back to Confidence Bites. My name's Stuart Elliott and I'm your host for this exciting show. Now today I want to talk to you about two things. The first one is I want you to start thinking about confidence as a habit. The second part is to start building our ability to have good conversations. Now, this has been all very, very difficult for me in the, in the past because I've always been the shy party wallflower. Every party you go to, you see me propping up the wall, drink in hand, desperately hoping that somebody would come talk to me because I was too shy to, to go out and talk to somebody. I didn't know what to say. So this is why I want to help you to get over the problem I had. Now, let's go back to confidence. Confidence is a habit. And you know habits are formed. So it makes sense to form good confidence habits, doesn't it? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in the other show, I, I reminded you about putting an elastic band on your wrist or something like that. Or you could have it on your, I mean, really, if you wanted to be crazy, you could put it on your ear or something. But, you know, having a reminder, a, a little device that every time you see it, it reminds you to think about being confident. And I talked about having the um, I am good sheet, the success diary, the I can pages in your pocket. And every time you know you set your alarm, and every time you got your your alarm went off, you got them out of your pocket. You looked at them, you smiled. Yes, I'm so confident. I'm so good. And then you put them back in your pocket, set the alarm, and go off. Well, the elastic band was the same type of device. What it is, every time you see it, it reminds you, triggers your mind to take them out, look at them, smile at yourself, feel good about yourself, and go about your day more confident. And if you have this on your wrist, and you look at it, and you note it every well, you know, you pull your things out every time you note it and you do this every day for two or three weeks, you'll be surprised how quickly this becomes a habit, how quickly you're thinking that you are a good person and you are, excuse me, you're understanding that you can do so many things and your success diary proves that to you. And you use that with the confidence triangle I introduced in the last show to just keep doing more and more and more. And this will become a habit. You'll start getting the habit of feeling good about yourself. Now, most of us have got the habit of feeling bad about ourselves. And we need to replace that. We need to get rid of that. Just kick it out the window and feel good. And over time, it will be cemented into you. Now, here's a, here's a thing. How effective do you think that will be? Probably at this moment, you're a little bit dubious. But let me tell you this with a story, a true story. One of my mentors... Igor Ledachowski told a story about a webathon where there was a guy on the webathon, sorry, telephone, telephone, it was a few years ago back in the UK. There was a guy on this telephone and he was doing push ups for about a day, 24 hours without a break. And everybody was stunned about how fit and how strong he was. And he tells the story that he wasn't always like that. He used to be the original couch potato. And one day he decided he needed to do something. So he bought a pair of training shoes and he put them by the door, the front door. And every time he passed them, he looked at them, but he didn't put them on and he didn't go out. He didn't do any running. He just looked at them. And then one day he said, OK, I'll try them on. So he put them on. And he still didn't go out and do training. But he did this a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then one day he went out in the garden and then he started doing a little bit of training. And eventually this became a habit. And he just did it over and over and over and became this super fit person. And it's the same with you and your I, I can, I am good and your success diary and your little elastic band or whatever devices you want to just jog your memory every time to get them out. You do this regularly. Little bit by little bit by little bit, you will change your feelings about yourself and you will make those feelings your good confidence habits. So remember that. Confidence 
is a habit and it makes sense to have good confidence habits, doesn't it? Okay, so let's move on to conversations. And earlier on I told you how I was the original party war flab and I didn't know what to say. I wish somebody would have helped me when I was younger. You see, a good conversation is more about you listening to the other person and asking one or two questions and letting them do all the work. That's it. It's that simple. And, you know, how easy is it to, have, you know, to, to ask a question? Well, let's have a look, you know. My name's Stuart. How are you? No, my name's Mary. Mary, what do you do for a living? There's the first question. Mary answers, tells me what she's doing for a living. Oh, that's interesting. How long have you been doing that? So I've just asked two simple questions and she's given me most of the conversation. Now, by listening and being aware of what she's saying and how her, emo her emotions change as she's saying it, I can pick up on what it is that's important to her and ask her a simple question. And here's the thing. She will give me all the conversation, all the questions. I just have to listen, show interest, and it's important now. It's not a police interrogation. It's not, why did you do that? How did you do that? It's genuine interest. You know, that's interesting. What's it like being a doctor? How many people do you see every day? Do you find it's very tiring? You know, simple things. You just ask simple questions. But you preface it with interest, with curiosity, with genuine concern about the other person. And they will pick up on that. Let me give you a good example of this. Uh, the other week, one of my um, clients phoned me and she said that she hates the people in her office because they're always bitchy towards her. They're always talking about things which are not interested. Most of them are young mothers or young parents and they're always talking about the children. Now, she doesn't have any children. She's not married and she doesn't really have any interest at this moment in being married or having children. So she doesn't know how to talk to them. And, you know, if they talk about their children, she sort of doesn't know what to say. So they think she's aloof, not interested, and they become bitchy behind her back. So I said to her, OK, maybe you're not interested in children. But what about how their energy changes when they talk about their children? Do they feel proud? Do they feel happy? Do they feel angry? Do they feel frustrated at times? Look at the energy behind what they're saying and then ask them genuine questions about that. So, you know, think about it. Your friend comes in or your colleague comes into work and you talk to you, say morning, and you say, how are your children today? Oh, no, this one. Oh, your children were so naughty. What did they do? And you have concern about that. And you echo back your empathy. And then they will start listening and expanding and telling you all the things you need. And maybe this child went and broke six plates in the morning or did something very similar. And you say, my, that's terrible. But you say it with genuine concern. What did you do next? Did you, did you tell him to clean up? Did he, does he have to pay for them with his pocket money or, or whatever? And you show concern and empathy and they will build a conversation for you. They will give you everything you need. You don't have to be interested in the topic per se. You're interested in more in how they perceive the topic and how their energy comes across. So she thought this was a great idea and she's going to try this. And during the course of our conversation, she let drop that she started learning the zither. And the zither is a long box. Uh, it's a Chinese instrument. It's a long box, maybe about two meters long and about uh, 200 deep. And it's got lots of strings on it. And people play it by plucking the strings and dong, dong. But it's not my kind of instrument. It doesn't, you know, the sound is, is nice, but it's not just not my type of thing. And I'm not really interested in the zither. But when she told me, I said to her, okay, sis, you know, I didn't know you played the zither. How long have you been playing? And she started saying, no, she's been playing about two years now, but she's starting to get better and she's becoming more confident about it. So she, she wants to play more. So I said, well, you know, do you have a zither? No, you know, I go to a shop, there's a music shop and there's a woman I get, I've gotten to know there. And she's really, you know, very, um, uh, very friendly and very kind. And she's teaching me. And we started having this long conversation about you know, my, my client, Joe, um, having a, 
lessons from this woman, how they're both very busy. So they, they can't always have a regular lesson, but they, they make a communication by phone. And Joe's now going on about the shop getting bigger and getting busy. So the woman's expanding the shop and the shop's now about 2000 square meters. And this conversation just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And all the time, Joe was getting more and more animated. She was getting more relaxed, more happy to tell me all about this thing that's really important to her. And after about 10 minutes, I stopped Joe and I said, okay, Joe, how do you feel right now? And she looked at me and she said, well, we were on the phone, so she, yeah, I couldn't see her. But you could hear her voice change. She smiled and she said, you know, I feel so happy. I feel, I feel so light. I feel so excited. I said, well, why do you think that is? And she said, because you've shown that you care. And I said, well, what did I do? I only asked you, asked you a couple of questions. And that's the point. I only asked a couple of questions about topics she had told me were interesting and important to her. I was focused on her energy. She was getting more excited. I was giving her feedback noises. That's great. Mmm, interesting. All these types of acknowledgements that I'm listening and I'm concerned. Just like she said, the shop's getting bigger. That's interesting. How big is the shop? How many people? How long do you play? But I was prefacing it with a comment to show that I was interested. I wasn't making it into an interrogation. And in reality, in that conversation, I only asked about three to four questions. I didn't do any work. I just listened and I was aware of how she was changing, how her energy was growing, and she was getting excited by the conversation. So I said to her afterwards, I said, OK, so you feel much more excited because I seemed to be a, an interested person who was showing genuine concern and listening to you and giving you the chance to talk about something important to you. How can you, that, how can you apply that with your colleagues at work, the ones who say their conversation is boring? And this really got her thinking because all I had done was echo in a practical way what I told her. Work with the energy, work with the interest of the other person. They will provide the topic or the topics or the questions for you to ask. Your job is to listen with, you know, genuine interest to them. You may not be interested in the topic, as I say, but you have the interest in how they change their energy. Then as you listen, you acknowledge that you're listening especially if you're on the phone and they can't see you. And if you've got a question, preface it if you can with a nice acknowledgement. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow, that sounds great. Tell me about this part of it. And just make it genuine. And I tell you, you will have the best conversations you have ever had. So, it's a very simple technique. It will take you practice. It will take you a little bit of time. Don't have to go whole hog. Just think about a conversation that you would normally have for 30 seconds or a minute and then you feel tongue tied. Can you double it to two minutes? I'm pretty sure you can. Can you double it to three or make it three minutes? I'm pretty sure you can do that. In fact, why don't you have a competition with yourself? Or you could tweet me on at Stuart Double C and let me know how long you're getting your conversations to go for. And remember, it's not about you talking, it's about you listening and getting the other person to talk to you. Because people love to talk about themselves. If they have pets, they love to talk about their pets. If they have children, they love to talk about their children. If they have hobbies or cars or other toys, they love to talk about those things because it's exciting to them. So all you have to do is focus on those things focus on their excitement, acknowledge them, and then just bring it into the conversation with a couple of well-chosen questions. So, today has been very useful. You understand now that confidence is a habit and habits are formed. So you can form good confidence habits. And you understand that it's easy to have a conversation. 
it's going to take a little time to practice and you know there will be mistakes along the way but don't worry about that because you're just getting better and better and better go out and practice and in the next show i'm going to give you more tips about how to make your conversations easier and how to make them more interesting so stay tuned drop me a line or drop me a message at adstuart double c on twitter let me know how you're going. Tell me if you're getting a one minute, a two minute, a three minute, a four minute, or how long the conversation is and how you felt and how the other person felt about it. Practice it. Go away. Start making this a habit along with your confidence habits. It's going to be the most beneficial thing you do. So thanks for watching. It's been great talking to you. Go out and get more confident every single day. Ciao. Confidence Bites, your weekly confidence building show, was brought to you by Stuart Elliott from Double C Coaching, www.doublecoaching.com, D-O-U-B-L-E-C-C-C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G.com. For regular confidence building tips, subscribe to this channel today, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Stuart Double C, capital S T U A R T, capital D O U B L E, capital C, at Stuart Double C.